Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special uh, example, a case study of an artist who would like to make it in the world of institutional art in Europe. And if you are an artist who would like to work with institutions, public organizations, or let's say private foundations, then this video is made for you. If you think working with uh, public funds is lame and you don't want their money, then this video is obviously not for you. All right, so I wanna talk about this because a few days ago I received an email from a Chinese artist who goes by the name of Tino. He sent me a long email detailing his struggles, his story, and he sent me his portfolio, curriculum, and he told me that he wanted to make it in the world of art. And it's a very difficult task because uh, if you know that in Italy, there is a long tradition of institutional art and it's a very, very established uh, phenomenon. It's a very, very watertight world to get into. And as a Chinese person living in Europe myself I could tell you that it is not an easy task so I would like to help him in any way I could I went through his works his social media links and I asked him if I could make it a case study so we could all share his case and study it and uh, I would uh, contribute my two cents and if you have any suggestions make sure you write us a comment in the comment box below so I could share this video and your comments with Tino so that he could also uh, come and see what you think and maybe your guys could uh, talk and collaborate if you would like to. Before getting into today's case study I would like to quickly tell you where I come from uh, in the world of, let's say, art or cultural industry. Uh, in the past uh, 10 years in my limited professional uh, life, I've worked half of my time in the public organizations and government institutions and another half of my time in the market market or in the private market, like startup in the market, in a free market. So with my limited experience, I can tell you that as a young artist, it is not a great choice to work with institutions right away after your graduation. Because number one, your lack of experience working with people, with organizations, and you might be overwhelmed by the power dynamic because it is a very, uh, let's say, unbalanced world to get into. Right? They are so huge, they are so dominant, and it's very difficult to negotiate with them if you don't have uh, much experience uh, in that. And number two, uh, they are not very tolerant if you would like to experiment and make some mistakes sometimes and if they, you did then they likely would not accept you again and it's a very intolerant uh, kind of market kind of uh, world to get into so if I were you as a young artist I would first experiment and do crazy stuff in the market market and just do a lot of stuff and then see where the fate takes me and if I'm bored of it, or I want to retire, I want to try something different, I would go to the public market after when I'm more mature, when I know my directions, I know what I'm doing. But of course, I'm not you. That's why I said if I were you, but of course, I'm not you. And you have uh, different circumstances. And also right now, with a specific time in our history, in the post-pandemic world, maybe working with public institutions is a very lucrative job. Maybe it is a, a very secure and good option for you. So it's your decision and I will support you uh, regardless uh, what's your choices and where you come from. Uh, now let's go to the case study of the artist whose name is Tino. I would not say all the beautiful good things about Tino because he could hear from uh, any other person. I'll just tell you the dry facts and the actual case. Tino is a young artist born in China in 1996. He studied in Academy of Fine Arts in Italy and graduated earlier this year. He's now on a job seekers visa and he's going to get the uh, self-employment visa next year because job seekers visa don't last forever. So he will have to change one day or another. And he had some group exhibitions in the past while he was at school, but he wasn't very happy with the level, with the curators, with the space, uh, different things, but he wasn't very content. So he would like to go for a solo show uh, next time. His works are more and more conceptual in the recent years. Of course, at the start, you, when you were a student, you were doing something you know, very typical, very traditional, showing off your skills. But now his works are more independent and more conceptual and more you know, uh, evoluting to the direction that he is aiming for. And he spent a lot of time developing his discourse, writing about his art. 
and he mentioned that he's working on two jobs, right? One job is as an artist, a researcher, another job is as an art writer of his own art. So he spent a lot of time on that. For those of you who does not know, uh, collectors here are more conservative. After the financial crisis, collectors are purchasing more old masters works or, or calligraphies of uh, famous uh, European artists, which there are a lot of them, so it's very difficult to compete against them. And uh, as a young artist uh, uh, starting out a career in your early 20s, it's a very, very, very enormously difficult to sell in the market market. And that's why he tries to get into the public market. And that's why he wrote me this email uh, asking for career suggestions. After watching one of my videos, he tried Sachi Art, but he felt that he did not like the pricing, the price range that Sachi Art offers. Like majority of the works are sold at like thousand, two thousand dollars. He did not feel comfortable selling his works that cheap. He would like to save the works for later when he could sell uh, at a higher price, which is perfectly fine. But uh, obviously, you know, it's again, not an easy task when you have to wait that long. But luckily, he's currently funded by his parents who send him approximately 2,000 euro every month. For those of you who do not know, in Europe, 2,000 euro is very good money. Usually a young worker after graduating from college, you would likely uh, to get uh, 1,300, max 1,500. Um, normally you don't get more than 2,000. So having 2,000 after tax is a very good pay and he could live comfortably and have uh, money for his art. Of course, 2,000 is not enough to live like a king in Europe. He's very grateful for the support of his parents, but he wants to make his own money because he knew that the parents' money couldn't last forever and he would like to prove himself in the world of art to the people who love him and support him. And he would like to become successful and get funded by the public money, which is a uh, very, uh, let's say, he set his goal very clear and he would like to fight very hard towards it. And now let's uh, highlight a few struggles that he is currently facing. And maybe you are facing similar struggles. And if this is the case, make sure you also leave me a comment in the comment box below. The first struggle is time, time management, because we all have 24 hours a day. He spent it on research and making art, then he does not have time to, let's say, write about his art, make a blog, uh, make update his website, and update his social media. Like It's very difficult to kind of juggle different balls, and he's already, you know, uh, doing many things, and uh, he's uh, going out with, uh, currently he's uh, going out with someone who's based in Europe, so he also has a uh, life. Like he, he's young and he wanted to live a life and I can imagine that you know you go out in the weekend and you work very hard Monday to Fridays and still you don't possibly have enough time to make everything you need to do and you want to do and the second thing is a difficult market in Europe and he's based in one of the most difficult market to experiment as a young artist because you know Italy, Europe, very traditional, very institutional and very watertight. To penetrate this market is very difficult with a conceptual work as an immigrant, this young, uh, without MFA or PhD, you know, it's just a very difficult market to, you know, say, hey, I'm here, notice me, like it's very difficult. And the third thing is with the positioning or pricing. He wants to price himself at a higher end, like he wanted to be the Hermes, the Louis Vuitton of art, which is normal, like who does not want that extra money? You know, nobody wants to sell cheap, but you know, it's a reality that as a young artist, you cannot just say, you know, I wanna sell high, like I don't wanna sell at 2,000, I wanna sell at 20,000, but how can you possibly support your price? So this is really, a, a positioning problem or let's say a struggle that he had to face to justify his price as a young artist to support his price and I did a, a series of videos on branding and pricing so if you would like to check it out I'll leave a link in the description below. Number four, human relations. Um, he said in the email that he was not very happy with the curator or let's say with the space he had, with the exhibitions. And I could read between the lines that he was not very happy with the relationships he had with the professionals in art in Italy um, because he did mention that he got into the group exhibitions but he did not say that he was um, happy to work with the artists or curators. So I was just guessing, maybe I was wrong. So uh, if um, you, you know this is not a case, Tino, make sure you also let me know in the email 
email and update me uh, with uh, the information. Um, but I understand that this is not something normally you'd say to a stranger, like, hey, you know, I don't have a good relation with a curator. No, you would keep it to yourself, which is a very professional thing to do. So I understand. So this is just my guess. And I guess this also because as a um, Chinese person living overseas, you know, you would uh, struggle. There are a lot of hurdles like intercultural communication, you know, the, the difference between the history, the religion, language, and you know, it's very difficult to get along in the world of art and in a foreign country. Number five, lack of online presence. With the online presence, I would say that he did not mention anything about it in his email, like saying that he tried or he did not try or what he want to do with his social media or website. Uh, he included the link, so I went and I realized that he did not spend a lot of time. I could see that on Instagram, he has only 300 followers and that is not many for an artist who went to art school because usually when you are at school, you started uh, making social social media links and uh, contacts uh, when you first got into it, like in the as a freshman in the year one. And then after four years, usually you would have a few hundred or a few thousand. That is a normal thing to have, but it seems like he did not spend a lot of time and his website is not very up to date and he did not have, uh, you know, a lot of, let's say, blogs and, and, you know, he did not publish a lot of things. So his positioning in the uh, Google search engine is not very high either. So he has a lack of online presence. Maybe he did not struggle or he did not think it is a struggle, but objectively speaking, it is a struggle that he would have to face if he wants to go somewhere online. Last but not the least, legal status. Currently, he is on a job seekers visa, but that does not last forever. And he would uh, be changing the visa in, let's say, uh, less than a year. But uh, this is not for granted. It's not like you go to the authority and you say, I want to go for some sort of entrepreneur visa, self-employment visa. No, they will have to evaluate you. They will have to see if you have a secure financial future, because if not, they will not have random people in their territories and you have to justify to the local authorities, to the tax authorities. And it's a very, very difficult thing to do because you need to provide hard facts, track record, history, and you cannot just invent stuff because you know they're not stupid. They're looking at hundreds of thousands of applicants and they can see if you uh, cheat, if you do something not true. So you have to really prove yourself in a short time to say, I'm here and I deserve all the privileges to stay here. Now, after going through these struggles and kind of my analysis of his problems or his potential problems that he is facing, I would like to offer him my uh, kind of version of solutions. And before getting there, I would like to say that contemporary art is a club and is not a very welcoming one. So it's very difficult to uh, be accepted into this club. And normally you go through three different kind of like, you know, doors. The first door is family. You have a family like, uh, you know, uncle, aunt, parents who had been working in art so they could introduce you to the key persons in the world of art or you hire a professional team, uh, you have a very wealthy upbringing, you throw money at them, they will accept you. And I think I told the story before, uh, one of my uh, students who went to the uh, Gagosian uh, Art Gallery in New York and she went for an interview and the job interviewer asked her two questions. The first one is, how much do your parents make? And the second one is, uh, what charity do you belong to? And she was like, I'm a charity. And that's a very, very uh, funny, but not so funny joke uh, that I would like to quickly point out again. It is a very difficult world to get into if you don't have money. And uh, with the support he got, I knew that he had the money, but not enough to say, I throw money at you, open the door. And the last, usually you go through a certain kind of connections like professors, like friends, but really good ones, right? Really solid uh, bonding connections, uh, which can open the doors for you. And if you don't have uh, none of the three things, likely you will have to fight very hard and wait very long time and work very hard to uh, get into the world of art and there's no guarantee. But is it possible? Yes, it is possible if you are resilient, if you try very hard and wait a very long time, if you're patient enough. It is a possibility and I would like to offer um, three different routes. And maybe that sounds a little bit too uh, pessimistic, but you know, I just want to be realistic in the start so that you don't have like high hopes or like kind of uh, unrealistic hopes. 
So the first uh, route or the first way to get in is through networking. And networking is like a sport. You know, everybody could play. Somebody is better at other body, uh, but you could always practice to get better and better. So you have to be passionate about human connections. You have to be good at it to, you know, to be willing to commit to the work of making this social human connections relations. And I'm not a good advisor for that. Uh, it seems that you know, I struggle myself with that. And uh, well, also as a Chinese person living in Europe, you would face some kind of hurdles like intercultural communication, you know, the language issue and all this kind of misunderstandings that can be very severe when it comes to a professional, like a key networking connection or events. Is it possible? Yes. And I'll give you an example of uh, an artist whose name is Jana Sturbak. She's a Czech Slovakian artist who was born in 1955. She immigrated to uh, Canada as a teenager at 13 years old with her parents and she attended Vancouver School of Art and she won a lot of government awards and she changed her nationality to Canadian and now either she had double or she had a Canadian nationality and I would say she's a good example of a artist who overcame a lot of hurdles to be recognized in the world of institutional art and to be able to achieve this as a woman in her era was remarkable and if you want you can check out her works it's also very conceptual um, you know I would say uh, not similar in the content but similar in the level of conceptualness uh, with the artist uh, uh, that I'm talking about today, Tino. Number two, disruption. And usually when we talk about disruption, we talk about online disruption, digital disruption. And of course you can do it offline, but online is easier, especially for an international artists who might have to move a lot, who would be living in two different countries like China and Italy uh, to have your online presence and make something uh, viral, um, become a meme, become an online sensation is a feasible choice. And uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, I made a video about an artist, Luke Jerram. He's a British artist who became a very famous artist online after 16 years of waiting. I would say waiting because he did this uh, viral sculptures. I mean, virus sculptures, <laughs> literally viral. And it went viral because of the pandemic, but he had been doing that since 2004. So uh, he had been trying and doing a long time and then he finally became recognized and he was previously already had some levels of success in the public domain but then after this uh, viral sculptures he became totally viral and he got a lot more recognition and i would say uh, is a good example don't expect to be a overnight online success you have to work hard and wait a long time and there's no guarantee so it's a long-term strategy and if you you are up to it then you can you can try and it doesn't take a lot of money it just takes a lot of time patience and resilience to keep on working when you see almost no results Last but not the least is my favorite route to the institutional art world, that is through uh, education. In other words, get yourself a PhD. Currently, I'm enrolled as a PhD researcher slash student in a local university in Spain, so I can tell you all about it. Uh, it is a good choice because uh, in the next three years, if you do a PhD directly or you do an MFA, then to do a PhD, uh, you're paying almost nothing. In Europe, right, you pay a few hundred euros every year so you don't have a lot of financial difficulties then you have a uh legality, you're legal to stay, you can apply for government funds, you can apply for certain kind of opportunities that are only open to researchers, to students, and also to foreign students. And you can also apply to like some certain kind of funds back in your home country because there are a lot more uh, educational bilateral agreements. If you just have a BFA, you do not have a MFA or PhD, it is a good idea to continue your education, especially you want to get into the institutional art and you um, let's say still experimenting and still exploring that can be seen as a negative thing in the world of institutional art you know they would like to see mature artists who know what they're doing and if you're at a very young age you're not very sure my advice is to stay in school so you are allowed to make mistakes to explore to change directions completely and you are not given you know a lot of uh, complaints or negative uh, kind of commentaries and that's my uh, three routes to the institutional art world uh, 
after studying the case of Tino, uh, what do you think if you're also struggling as a young artist uh, in the world of art, trying to get into either an institution or trying to have certain opportunities to have your first solo show or apply for a fund? Let me know in the comment below what struggles you're currently facing and what advice you have for Tino. All right, that's all for today. For now, if you have any suggestions, also let me know in the comment below. And thank you for watching.